It just feels like the whole thing is going to tip over. <laughs> Sedans, with their four doors and a trunk, they kind of remind me of suburban shopping malls. Ubiquitous icons of the 20th century, which are now in a slow, apocalyptic decline. This is probably the most unremarkable car on YouTube you've ever watched. A silver crossover SUV, in particular the 1999 Lexus RX 300. But I point this car out to you today as one you ought to pay attention to because this model car destroyed the sedan segment. The very first crossover SUV sold in America wasn't this car. It technically goes to the AMC Eagle, but if you look at the pictures of it, it's basically a station wagon that's just been jacked up a little bit. The traction and confidence of four-wheel drive at the flick of a switch. It's not to say the Eagle was a bad car. It just was a little ahead of its time. AMC's reaction to Subaru. These babies from Subaru don't need help. Who were importing their utilities to America, but Subarus were straight-up wagons where the Eagle was genuinely a crossover. It was lifted, it was capable. It spurred Honda and Toyota to quickly offer their own lifted hatchbacks that they had modified to kind of fill that crossover niche. But none of these quite had the sales bite, the fireworks, the, the attention to tell automakers, hey, Americans are hungry for a new car segment. That would come later. This car's little baby brother, the Toyota RAV4. Toyota took a Corolla, put beefy tires on it, a hatchback, and gave it kind of off-road styling. And it sold reasonably well. They were selling about 50,000 RAV4s a year. So executives over at Lexus got looking at that and said, hmm, should we try something weird over at Lexus? So it's 1993, the LS400 had been a big smash the last couple of years. Executives at Toyota in Japan sit down to lunch and they have an idea. People around the world are starting to snatch up these sport utility vehicles off dealer lots, like the 4Runner, Ford Explorer and others, but they all handle like trucks. What if Lexus turned a car into a sport utility vehicle and the modern crossover was born? Now that's a huge gamble because Lexus buyers don't like weird. This was not like the SUVs that were for sale on the market at the time. The Ford Explorer, at its heart, it was basically a truck. And there's a lot more raw material compared to a car. Since trucks are expensive to build, truck-based SUVs are also expensive. That made the 1990s sort of a world of automobile haves and have-nots. Because they go to the lot and they look at the Taurus and it'd be like $17,000. And then they look at the Explorer and it'd be $34,000. And that's a pretty big jump to make. In this case, engineers took the Lexus ES300 mid-sized luxury sedan and lifted it into something that looked like an SUV. At the heart of this, it was a car. Transverse sideways engine, front wheel drive. Introducing the first luxury SUV that doesn't ride like a truck. If somebody went on the lot to look at the ES300 and saw it was eh, about 29,000 and this one was 33,000, that's not that big of a jump. Getting that price point right served Toyota very well. The ES300 had been selling about 45,000 cars a year in 1999 when this came out. In its first sales year, it outsold the ES300. By a factor of two, 90,000 of these vehicles were sold. In the history of Lexus, half of the vehicles they've ever sold were crossover SUVs. Most of those, the RX. And when you have a hot seller like this, other automakers are going to notice and they're going to copy it. Toyota had started an arms race. Honda rushed to turn an Accord into this, the Acura MDX. BMW introduced the X3, which was basically a three-series sedan, wagon-fied. Volvo started producing the XC90, which didn't even try to pretend that it wasn't just a V70 wagon. Even Porsche, the company that had produced basically the same car for 50 years, built an SUV in the Cayenne. And in the process, they were able to get rid of the downsides that came with this truck-based SUV. Only the crash test dummy in the Lexus RX 300 came through virtually unscathed, which means our dummy could very well walk away from the accident. Never in history has a mid-sized SUV performed better. It had a shorter wheelbase, so it was easier to park, unlike the Tahoe. It got better fuel economy. The build quality was better. A big 
selling point was just its size inside. You could fold the seat back and put all kinds of stuff back there. My brother and sister-in-law were saying they've got this huge dining room table in here. You'd be able to use this thing like a truck, but still have a lot of the uh, conveniences of having a regular car. We throw that around like at some kind of uh, run-of-the-mill thing, but it wasn't in 1999. At the time, if you wanted to haul stuff, you needed a pickup or a big truck-like SUV. There just weren't options. Even the other crossover-type cars that were really wagons, like the uh, Subaru Outback, just don't have the space in the back that this thing has with the height. Acceleration on this car is kind of leisurely. If you push the throttle down a reasonable amount, it it's kind of takes its time to pick up and go. It's certainly not in a hurry. Now, you can make this car really go if you tromp on it. But it does a double downshift, and it just feels like you're kind of stressing the car out, like, okay, I'll go fast, but I don't like it. When you turn, take the corner kind of fast, it just feels really top-heavy, like it wants to tip over. Probably not as bad as the old Ford Explorers. It also feels kind of scary when you have to brake suddenly, like you get a yellow light. The car really noses down, and uh, you almost wonder if you're going to come to a stop. You always do, but I, I don't like that nose dive. I will concede that that's probably because the shocks are original and they're all worn out. Um, you can hear a lot of clunks as I go over bumps like that. I think Lexus have a lot of uh, rubber bushings they put in these cars to make a, the luxurious smooth ride. That kind of shutter sound from the bumps is the same sound that the ES300 made when its suspension wore out. I wish I could give you more description of the driving dynamics other than to say it just feels like I'm in a very tall Toyota Camry. There's nothing particularly offensive about it, but there's nothing also to really get excited about either. It's just a car. There is the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which is designed to climb a mountain, and there's the GMC Yukon to tow your boat. And Lexus knew that we think we want a car that can do those things, but then Monday morning comes and we get busy and we end up just commuting to work and we never really get around to going up the mountains unless it's a gravel driveway or towing a boat unless it's one that has paddles. So they built a car that could do that and primarily to commute. The infotainment system is kind of confusing. It was sort of in a window of time between the really simple systems of old and sort of the more thought out, laid out systems you have in modern cars. So the buttons are just sort of all over the place and, and there's lots of knobs. So this is one of the first cars, even for a Toyota, I believe, where you just press the button and it goes down. For all four windows, too, I can do it in the pull at once and it goes back up without having to monkey with it yourself. Just roll down the window a little bit, maybe to get a little bit of air, and then it's like, how, how, do, you, how do you stop it? In the newer cars, I think Toyota fixed the sensitivity. To make it go auto, you really have to press it down to get it to go. But with this one, it's just a feather touch. So. Um, it, it's kind of sensitive where you have to just pull on it a little bit. You know, and that's not distracting at all. There's also a lot of rattles inside the car. It's not that Toyota built shoddy materials. It's that they put this deep center console here. It's a lot deeper than you'd have in a normal car because of the upright seating position. It's almost like I'm sitting in a chair versus sitting low and stretching my legs out like I would in the sedan like the ES300 or the Camry. They had a few high techy features at the time like a readout of instantaneous miles per gallon and what you got overall until you reset it. Which right now it's a little bit lower than average, but typically it's at about 20 to 21, uh, which, you know, for a car this size wasn't bad. For 1999, especially when it's stacked up against something like like an Explorer, I think that's actually quite good. I think it's probably about four or five miles per gallon better. It's not as good as the ES300. It's possible that the uh, frontal area of the car being so tall, it has to push more wind out of the way. The car's probably a bit heavier. But even then, sedans like the ES300 weren't getting amazing gas mileage back then. So it wasn't a huge sacrifice. I wonder what would have happened if this car had been a commercial flop. If this had been Toyota's 
Pontiac Aztec, you know, they'd messed up on the styling, they'd marketed it wrong, they'd gotten the price point wrong, and this car hadn't been successful. I do think the crossover segment still would have shown up, but it might have been delayed 10 years. So this created an arms race of every other automaker racing to play catch up. The American automakers hung on a little longer. They really liked that truck-based SUV platform, but even they got into the car-based crossover segment. And today now we have three segments of crossovers, different sizes, almost like the old sedans where you had the subcompact and the compact and the full size. You have that with the crossovers as well. If this car hadn't been built, the crossovers still would have taken over. But if you think about it as dominoes all lined up, this was one of the first ones that pushed over. And because it didn't just fall flat on its face, it knocked the game into play. If you're mourning the loss of the sedan segment that's slowly dying right before our eyes, blame this car. The Lexus LS400 is designed to stir the soul and not much else. Lexus LS400 is designed to stir the soul. And no! <laughs>